Well, hey, everybody. So glad that you could join us tonight for our State of the Church address. Uh, my name's Craig. I'm the pastor here. And just wanted to be able to kind of give you an update on some of the things that are going to be going on in the church over the next couple of days. So uh, here in just a minute, you're going to get to hear from our children's pastor, Joseph, as well as our youth pastor, Adam. And they're going to be explaining um, some changes that are going to be happening in our children and youth ministry. So that'll be really exciting. Uh, some cool stuff coming your way. Um, <clears throat> but I also wanted to just let you know, really reiterate uh, what's going to be happening this Sunday. And so if you're a member at Park Hill, uh, you probably have already heard this. If you're a college student and you're coming back, um, this may be new to you, but wanted you guys to be aware of what's going to be happening. So uh, in light of the uh, COVID situations going on in our country, we are having to pivot just like everybody else to make accommodations for our church and for college students and for you guys as you come back into town. And so because of that, we are actually going to be moving to two services beginning this coming Sunday. Uh, one service will be at 9.30, the other will be at 11 o'clock. These services will be um, an hour long or less, and uh, they'll be the exact same service both times. So you, whichever one you pick, you're going to get the exact same worship experience. Um, and so we're going to be in the sanctuary, and there'll be a ton of chairs out. We're only going to use every other row, so one row will be marked off. The other row will be available for you to sit in. We are going to try to leave uh, three or four seats between uh, family groups. Uh, so if you're a student and whatever a family group is, whatever the college is classifying as your family group, if you're sitting uh, with those people, that'll be just fine. We would encourage you to not uh, sit with people that are not in your family group. The other thing is uh, we are going to wear masks. Um, we realize that the state has given the option for churches not to have to do that but because we want to be responsible citizens and really set a good example of loving our neighbor. Uh, we're going to wear masks uh, as we gather together in worship. Um, so it's not ideal, uh, but, but as I reminded our church family uh, a few weeks ago, every time that that mask is on and you feel uncomfortable, you know, it's, it can be a reminder to us of just the, the need that we have for the breath of God in our life, for the Holy Spirit to work in our life. So we can actually make it a part of our spiritual disciplines that every time we feel that, uh, we take it to the Lord in prayer. So I uh, wanted you to be aware of that. Another thing that you need to know is that whichever service that you choose, and um, there should be a, a Google form that's going around. Uh, kind of exp that you can fill out and say if you're a church member, especially college students, we would encourage you to do this as well, but you don't have to, um, is to let us know which service you're going to attend, either the 930 or the 11. Um, another thing to, to keep in mind is that the doors for the worship service will not open until 15 minutes prior to the service. So if you come to the 930, you will not be able to get into the building until 915 you come to the 11 o'clock, you won't be able to get in the building till 1045. The reason for that is so that we can have time to clean the buildings, make sure that everything is the way it needs to be, and all our people are set in their positions. Um, so 15 minutes ought to give us enough time to get into the building, get settled, um, and a little bit of time for fellowship. I know it's not as much time as we like or as we're used to, but until we get into a rhythm, uh, we want to limit that as much as we can because of all the COVID stuff going on. So I want to show you a quick uh, video that will explain in a little bit more detail, if you haven't been with us yet, uh, what a typical Sunday morning, given these new restrictions, is going to look like so that you can be prepared for that as you come. Um, but so take a look at this, and it should explain um, most of what you'll experience on Sunday morning. Hey, everybody. Hey, I wanted to give you uh, just a quick kind of walkthrough of what uh, Sunday morning is going to look like for those of you who are going to be participating online. So, first of all, when you come onto the property, you're going to notice that one side is going to be blocked off, and we're all going to enter through this same side, all right? And the reason we're going to do that is we want to encourage you to drive down and park down in the lower lot. Um, so this lot will be open for parking in case you do need to get uh, park up here uh, for handicap reasons or anything like that. So you'll be able to do that. But we're going to encourage as many of you as can to park down in the lower lot. And we'll explain why in just a minute. But, so, but if you do park up here or if you park downstairs, let's just walk through the building so that you can get a sense of what Sunday morning is going to look like. Uh, so come with me. All right. So as you get out of your car and you come up, we're going to invite you to wear a mask. Um, so as you're coming into the building, you're going to be wearing your mask. Now, I've got mine around my ear right now so that you can hear me okay. Uh, I want you to be able to keep but everyone will be wearing a mask as they come in. As you come up to the building, uh, you're going to see just some lovely human beings standing outside. Uh, right now, Buddy Bird's standing out here. 
And uh, we're gonna have some greeters that are gonna be greeting you, letting you know how excited that they are that you are here, and uh, kind of being here to help you, give you any instructions that you need uh, as you move into the building. Hey, buddy. Hey, oh, how you going? Good to see you here. All right. So, uh, yeah, down the stairs, there'll be somebody to show you where to go next. All right. So as you come on in, you'll notice some signs that'll be explaining uh, kind of what we're gonna be doing together with the face mask and washing our hands. And look, there's a stop sign. So we're gonna sanitize before we come in. Fun, fun, fun. So uh, you'll go ahead and get some sanitizers. You head down the steps. There's also one of these at the bottom as well so that you can uh, sanitize at the bottom. Now, the reason we're doing this up here is because if you need to touch the rails uh, so that we're not spreading germs on the rails, so people are going down. Come on down. Hey guys, how are y'all? All right, so as you get downstairs, uh, you'll see some other greeters that are gonna be here. Now, if you come in this door, uh, there'll be some greeters over here that have hand sanitizer as well that will go ahead and give you some as you come in. Uh, so you'll come in and then there'll be a greeter here as well as someone's going to show you where you're going to see. So let's go on in to the sanctuary. So what we're going to try to do, we've got the rows spaced out about six feet apart. Um, and what we're going to try to do is leave about three chairs in between uh, family groups sitting within the sanctuary. So uh, our greeter will help take you to where you need to go. So you'll be seated in a row and you'll walk over to your seat. So, so you can sit right here. There'll be three seats between you and the person that, um, the next person that comes in. We're gonna give some freedom as far as where people sit, but we are going to require three seats between family groups. So you'll be sitting during the service. You'll have your mask on. I know it's not ideal, uh, but at least for this season, we're gonna be practicing uh, wearing the mask. Be watching the service, participating in worship, uh, all the wonderful things that come with being in the building together. We're gonna have a great time together. The service itself will be around 55 minutes. We're gonna keep it shorter, at least as we begin, for a couple reasons. One, we wanna help you as much as possible not to have to go to the bathroom while you're here. Uh, the reason for that is because it requires a lot of cleaning and making sure that every, everything is sanitary. And so we wanna give, uh, make it as short as possible while not, while not uh, cutting short the opportunity to be together and gather in the Lord. So about 55 minutes, uh, there'll be a sermon, time of worship. We'll have a time uh, to really engage every walk of life in our congregation. After the service is over, uh, Pastor Adam's gonna be up at the front and he'll be announcing row by row uh, that we're gonna exit out. So the first row will go out, the second row will go out, the third row, but the way that we're gonna go out is through the double exit doors over to the left. So as soon as it's your row, uh, Adam will say, all right, the next row go, and you're gonna come with me. Now, if you have some health issues where you need some help getting in and out, please let us know that and we'll make sure that we make this as short and as easy as possible for you. But um, you're going to come to these double doors. These doors will be swung wide open. And you're going to exit out these doors. Now, remember when I said at the beginning we would prefer you to park down here? Well, this is the reason why. It's because now you're going to be able to go directly to your car if you park down here. If you did need to park at the top, no problem. You're just going to come with me. You're going to keep walking this way. You're going to go right back through these double doors. That'll be swung wide open. Get some hand sanitizer, walk up the steps, right back out to your car. So, and then everyone will exit out the same. Uh, both of them will be open at that point. You can exit out either one of them. So I hope this explains kind of how this experience will go, what, what, we'll be, uh, what we'll be doing together. Again, we will be wearing our masks. We will be sanitizing, practicing social distancing. But all of that, while it may be an inconvenience, is really just a secondary thing. What we're coming to do is worship King Jesus, to fellowship with one another, to study God's word together. And all of that is going to be there. And so I encourage you. Uh, I know these are inconvenient. I know they can be problematic. But I want to encourage you as much as possible. Uh, to press through that and to be a part of what God is doing. Now, I do want to say, for those of you who are not comfortable yet getting out, totally understand. And this is not a, you know, we're going to have two different churches, the online church and the church that's meeting in person. And we have one church. Right now, we have two campuses. 
And one campus is gonna be meeting in person and one campus is gonna be meeting online. And it is our goal and vision that both campuses would be fed the word of the Lord, that you would find encouragement and strength together as you continue on this journey with Jesus. So thank you for uh, participating. Uh, however you're gonna participate, stay engaged with the church body and we will worship together. So God bless. Since, uh, you know, as you kind of got a feel there for what a Sunday morning is going to look like, we can't wait to see you. I hope that you'll be there uh, this coming Sunday. Uh, before I pass you off uh, to, to Joseph, and he's going to explain a little bit more about what's going to be happening in our children's ministry, I just want to encourage you. Um, I know this time is, is abnormal. It's very strange, and it can feel like it's just um, things are just spinning out of control. And in one sense, they are. In one sense, they are out of our control. But in another sense, uh, this is just another opportunity for God to mature us and grow us and to encourage us and strengthen us, to bring us together as a church family. And so we haven't given up on our mission, uh, being the Great Commission of making disciples, sharing the gospel, making disciples, um, and being the people that God has called us to be, loving God and loving our neighbor. And so um, we're as committed as ever to that goal. And um, even though we can't uh, be within six feet of those outside of our family group right now, uh, we are very much committed to the goal. We know that the Holy Spirit gets much closer than six feet. Uh, he lives within our heart and he is very much present in us and through us. And so uh, here's Pastor Joseph to explain what's going on in our children's ministry, but thanks for tuning in and I can't wait to see you this coming Sunday. Hi, I'm Pastor Joseph and I'm excited to let you know that uh, this upcoming Wednesday, August 19th, we are starting our kids club back up. Now, I'm excited about that, and I hope you'll be excited about that too after you're done hearing what it's going to look like, because it is going to look a little bit different uh, this year, but like I said, I'm excited about it. So um, from 5.30 to 6 o'clock, instead of having um, a time where kids would come in and we would go through rotations of playing games and having a large group time and a small group time, we are instead going to have a worship service specifically for our kids. So basically, uh, it's like a youth service or like our Sunday morning service, but it is specifically for our kids. And in this service, just for kids, we're going to have a time of worship. We're going to have um, some socially distanced games. We're going to have uh, skits or some experiments that tie in with a lesson. And then we are going to have a teaching time brought by myself or some of our other leaders. And we're going to be giving the kids a an overview of the entire story of the Bible. Some of you guys remem may remember when Pastor Craig gave an overview of the Bible uh, a few years ago when he went through and used the banners that are now hanging in the sanctu sanctuary. Well, we are going to reuse those and take our kids through the overall story of the Bible so they can see how it fits together. So I'm really excited about this. I think it's going to be an awesome opportunity for our kids. So the details, it is going to be from 5.30 to 6 o'clock in the sanctuary. So we're doing it in the sanctuary so that we're able to space out and um, social distance. Uh, we are going to require all kids to wear their masks and social distance as much as we can. So all of our kids will have masks on, all of our leaders will have masks on. The only person who will not have a mask is whoever is doing the main teaching that night. And at that point, they'll be far enough away from uh, the kids and everybody else, um, that they'll be able to re remove their masks so that they're able to do their teaching. Um, this is for all ages. Of, if you're in the children's ministry, you are invited to come to this. So it's kindergarten through sixth grade, you are welcome to come. And our preschoolers are welcome to come too if your parent stays in the building. So you're welcome to stay in the children's service or head up to Pastor Craig's dive class. Um, or sit outside the sanctuary, but if your preschooler is attending, we need you to stay in the building just for safety reasons um, with all of this going on. Um, we want to make sure that preschool parents stay close. Um, we encourage kids to use the bathroom prior to coming, but we'll of course have bathrooms available because it's hard to, to tell a kid, you're not going to be able to use the bathroom for 30 minutes. So we will have some bathrooms available and they'll be cleaned appropriately after each use. Um, we will have plenty of adult leaders and college leaders 
in this service helping. I'm excited to have a lot of our college students back um, that have helped us in previous years. They're excited to be back and to be with our kids. Um, so we will have plenty of adult supervision during this time. Um, and like I said, everybody will be wearing a mask and be social distanced. Uh, the last important thing is that we've got to make sure that kids are picked up as close to six as possible because the youth are going to be using the sanctuary uh, after us and they need time to get in and do their band rehearsal and get set up for their youth service. So we've got to make sure that kids are picked up as close to six o'clock as possible. So again, this upcoming Wednesday, the 19th from 530 to six o'clock, we are having our kids club worship service. Be there if you can. If you're not able to, we are going to be live streaming this or recording it and putting it on YouTube, still working out the details uh, about that. But if you're not able to join in person, you can still join us online for this awesome experience. Like I said, I'm excited about it. I hope you're excited about it. And I hope to see you guys then. Hi there, church family. I want to uh, just take a few moments to update you about what is going on in our student ministry. Uh, and some things that are, are changing a little bit as we head into the school year. Um, first, uh, I, I would just love to thank all of you and especially uh, the parents of our students for being um, super flexible during uh, this strange time. Um, there's been lots of changes throughout this process since we began back in March. And so I want to thank you. Uh, from the bottom of my heart for, for being flexible and working with us. And um, so thank you very much. Um, so let's get straight to it. Uh, a couple of things coming down uh, the road here pretty soon for student ministry. Uh, the first is uh, I would love to start with the band, uh, the youth band, that is. Uh, and we would love to uh, Come back to a place where we can reinstate the youth band uh, and let them use their gift and talent to serve the Lord and serve uh, serve here at church. And so uh, we would love to do that. Uh, I worked with uh, the staff uh, on creating some guidelines for the youth band. Um, so when we come back, and I would just like to take just a couple of minutes to review those really quickly and um, so here they are uh, for um, non-vocalists we would ask that you wear a mask uh, while you're playing uh, we'll certainly keep you all uh, all band members appropriately distanced on the stage and they'll be appropriately distanced away from the audience the congregation of students as well um, so we want to wipe down all of the instruments after we're done playing. And so we'll have some Lysol wipes on hand uh, for that to, to take place. Um, every instrument, even drumsticks, um, you know, we, we want to wipe everything down um, because our adult praise team will be coming in just a few days later to lead us in worship on Sunday morning. So we want to make sure that the instruments are taken care of and cleaned um, so and then for our production team we'll be wiping down the computer keyboard and and things like that um, so the way that our band would dismiss is they would uh, walk down opposite sides of the stage um, obviously keeping their distance from one another while they do that as well and vocalists would need to uh, put their mask on before they leave the stage. Um, so those are some of the guidelines that we've created for the band. Uh, and we feel that it is a good way to keep them safe while they're serving and leading us in worship. Um, so practice, uh, well, let me begin with this. Um, the earliest date that I feel comfortable with reinstating the band is September the 9th. Um, that's two weeks after school has uh, ramped back up and so um, we just wanted to give uh, a couple of weeks time to see what would happen uh, if anything I, prayerfully nothing will, will go wrong 
Um, we won't have any flare-ups or anything like that, but just wanted to give a little bit of extra space to uh, see what happens uh, because the last thing that I want to do is reinstate the band and then have to pull the plug on them you know a week after school starts because of a flare-up or something like that um, so we're just wanting to be very conscious about keeping everyone safe and so september 9th would be the earliest that we would start with the band reinstating the band um, and so we would start band practice at six o'clock uh, after the kids a ministry has done with their service and the kids have all exited the building six o'clock the band comes in uh, as well as the production team any students that are wanting to serve in that way uh, the soundboard the computer uh, the lighting uh, and the live stream uh, we all we have places for students to serve in those areas as well they would need to be there at six o'clock as well and so we would practice um, for 30 to 45 minutes, and, uh, and that would be our time for band practice. And then we would transition into uh, our service time, which brings me to the second thing that I would like to speak with you all about, uh, and is just to update you on a uh, time change for our regular midweek student worship service. Um, and so that time change is going to be moved back, moved up uh, to 7 o'clock. Uh, we're going to start at 7 o'clock and our service will go for about an hour to uh, until 8 o'clock. So from 7 to 8 is our regular uh, midweek student worship service. Um, I would ask for parents to uh, help kiddos review the the guidelines uh, they'll likely stay the same uh, week to week but also we're learning new things all the time and so some of those guidelines might be tweaked from time to time and so I would just ask you to keep an eye on that and help your students abide by them as well um, so for students who are not yet comfortable parents who are not yet comfortable uh, letting their kiddos come for an in-person meeting, um, we want to provide them with every opportunity to be a part and participate. And so uh, we plan to do a live stream uh, every week for the midweek service and they can, students can jump onto our Park Hill Baptist Church YouTube page uh, and that will be where we will stream the service to. So they can watch uh, the live stream and for them to be able to participate in their discussion group uh, we're gonna uh, zoom them in uh, so we, we want to put them on a zoom call with their DG leader or a FaceTime call um, either way uh, and they'll be able to be a part of the group that way um, so those are our plans for our midweek service and for our band uh, one other thing I, I'd like to update you all about is Camp Fuego. Um, and so, as you all know, we decided not to go to Camp Fuego today. And uh, there's been some negotiations uh, with them since our time of deciding that we wouldn't go. Uh, and Camp Fuego, I just received an email two days ago. Uh, Camp Fuego has issued a check. Uh, refunding the full amount of deposits that have been paid in and so uh, parents you can expect to receive uh, a check for the deposit that you paid in for your student or your students uh, and so we're happy to um, to update you with that information that is all that I have for now from the student ministry, uh, parents and church family. Uh, thanks for watching and letting me update you guys on what's going on. Uh, we're believing and praying and expecting God to do wonderful things um, during these strange times. Uh, it is a, a difficult season, but God is good and He is sovereign. And so we're placing our trust in Him and we're happy that you are a part of this ministry to these wonderful students uh, that call Park Hill uh, home.
And so, uh, love you guys. Um, can't wait to, to see you.